Podcast episode 21, maybe? I don't know. That's quite a few we've done. So I'm here with my excellent knitter co-hosts, Lindsay and Jill. Hello. Lindsay's Hello. back with us. Yay. We're happy about that. We missed you last month. But, you know, she had important work. She had the ultimate whip to become a fob, so. Yes. Yes. So that's exciting. How's motherhood? Are you loving it? Yeah, I am. It's great. Well, I mean, would you say no? <laughs> yeah, I would if I wasn't loving it. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. It is. Let's just acknowledge that in the beginning, it's difficult. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, you can love it anyway, but it is. It's hard. Everybody's healthy. Everything's good. Yeah, we're all great. Awesome. Jill's just beaming. She's just happy about her new remodeled basement. You made a rhyme in the intro. I did? Yeah. Is that what you were? I, I, was, I was so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, she doesn't even realize it. What did I say? Something about episode 21, being together is so much fun. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have, to, I'll have to play it back and see. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention, clearly. <laughs> I don't pay attention to what I say. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, so this is, speaking of whips, becoming fobs, besides babies, which is the ultimate project, we are happy to announce our new knit along. Coming up, we're going to try to start this. I think we should start February 15th. It's okay. on a weekend. That's a Saturday. It's a weekend. And That's I, a yeah, I think that gives people time to like take that Saturday to gather up. So let's talk about what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to do a whip challenge. That sounds bad, but we're going to call it. <laughs> we're calling it the frog it or finish it. Right? Yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is the yarny knitter version of saying fish or cut bait. Fish or cut bait? I've never heard that. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Or. Wash me whip. Wash no. me. What? <laughs> Watch me knit knit. Sorry. That is so not going in there. You have not started recording. Well, I can't get the whip part right, but you knew she's, what I was talking about. She is recording. <laughs> Hashtag knitters can dance. Not this one. <laughs> no, nor this one. I think it's like that. Anyway. <clears throat> I don't know anything about that song. I'm sorry. Me? Hanging out. It's Happy. fine. I didn't get the whole thing on there. Because I didn't think to push record until you're about halfway through. <laughs> I say, okay. We're good. <clears throat> the whole point of Frog It or Finish It is to gather up all your works in progress or whips. Gather up all of them. That means all of them. So Lindsay and I were talking briefly about this earlier today, about what that exactly means. Now I have some things in a closet that, I mean, I've been knitting a little bit longer than the two of you, so I potentially have stuff that I has not seen the light of day in more than a decade. So I, I ha I'm challenging myself also to dig out all of the things and then decide, okay. So uh. What's the criteria? What is our criteria for frog it or finish it? What's the criteria? Go. <laughs> I, um, I uh, draw on the boss knitter rule, hashtag boss knitter, so I get to decide. Oh, yeah. Well, let's have some guidelines for the challenge. Yes, true. So, okay. So I love the idea of bringing out all your stuff because when we were talking about doing the podcast, I found things that I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, some categories. That will be one. Show us the things you forgot you had. <laughs> Ooh. 
I'm going to create a thread in the Ravelry group for a D stash. Okay, but let's say I were to weigh this, and I know that there's two ounces here, and I know what this is. It's Woolies, and it's uh, primarily acrylic. And let's say I'm I'm just over it. I don't need it, but I have a certain quantity of this. I'll take a picture. I know what it is. I'm going to list it, and then I'm going to say, hey, you know, five bucks for all of it, or free yeah. free if you pay shipping, right? And I'll pass it along to someone who could it has a better home than it would with me get rid of what you don't want and it will go to someone who would appreciate it and use it whereas maybe i won't you see what i'm saying yeah i like that but so that would be an example of frogging because i know i'm not going to finish that i know that i won't finish it and so it feels like a burden because it's hanging out i'm not i'm not honoring the possessions that i have because it's just sitting in a closet and I don't like that. That's not okay. What if someone else could make something lovely with it and it's appreciated elsewhere? Yeah. So that's one category. Frog it. And then either, Get keep, rid of it. either keep the yarn and have a different purpose for it and go ahead and upload it into your Ravelry stash so that you know what you have, right? That's also the purpose here is really Ooh. discovering what you have you know, either frog it or decide, oh yeah, I remember where I was and actually finish it. Okay. So did you guys read the article about the Gideon rule? Yes. Yes. I liked it. I loved the concept. I um, was really surprised because I thought, oh, five, that's what I have. A I have a few more than five. So then I was struggling with, okay, so what goes in my top five? And I was really tempted to put the one that I was struggling with the most, like outside of the top five. So I didn't have to make that decision. Uh -huh. I think the purpose of it is to make that decision. Yeah. And it, was, it was really nice because when I thought, when I read the article about the rotation and knowing you have to work on it, two things for me went right away. Nope, not finishing it. And so you, it knew. you knew you'd frog that. Because I don't want to spend 12 hours knitting on it. Yeah. So for, so for viewers, the link will be down below. We'll put the link to the article that we're talking about. It was a blog article from woolandhoney.com. And we'll, we'll put that down below. But basically the premise is you gather up all your whips, right? Jill, why don't you explain the premise? So you gather up all of your whips and you put them in a rotation and so they suggest starting with five and so you have a pile of five and you pick up number one on the top and you decide if you're going to frog it or finish it and if you frog it okay you do it if you finish it you spend 12 hours on that piece and then at the end of the 12 hours it goes at the bottom of your pile right and then the next one rises to the top and so so 12 knitting hours might be different for different people and there's no judgment about that. I mean, if I, I work from home, so maybe I knit a little bit more every day than someone that works away from home like you do, like you travel, you know, you're away from home every day for your work. And so, but on the other hand, maybe you have a binge weekend where you could spend 12, six hours on Saturday and Sunday both. And then, so you work on that one thing, focus on that one thing for that 12 knitting hours and then you're either done at that point or it goes to the bottom of your pile of five correct right? so was, go ahead i was just going to say that was really helpful because when i sat to think of do i really want to spend 12 hours on this no yeah if you're not loving it then you need to frog it and either repurpose the yarn or pass it on to someone who would enjoy it yeah this could be cleansing i'm just saying i'm kind of excited sorry Liz. oh i just said i'm kind of excited i'm also kind of like because eh. you don't want to deal with some of the stuff you know you have <laughs> right right <laughs> i don't did want to make a decision on them did you find something you didn't remember that you had really just things that I've put away you know and so why so that that's interesting because I, I'm sure a lot of us will have things that we pull out and we're like oh and then you're like well and it is it's hard to make a decision but then so the criteria for making that decision let's talk about that one do you know where you were in the pattern like could you 
do you know where you are? Could you pick it up and go, could you pick it up and read your knitting and remember, uh, yeah, okay, I know where I was here and I am capable of carrying on. Or do you pick it up and you go, oh, crap, that's really hard. I have no idea. I lost my total mojo with this project. I don't know where I am. I'm going to have to tink back to figure it out. Like, what I mean by that is actually tink, read your knitting by tinking back. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, that sounds awful. <laughs> For example, if you had a pe okay. That's the thing I will not do. So in that case, you would frog it. But like for me, for example, I'm going to have to pick up this sweater that I've been working on for my mother, and I'm going to have to remember where I'm at. Okay, here. If you had Nick and Panion. I'm excited. I actually thought of that project when you were talking about this. I can't wait to see it after 12 hours or in on it. Okay, so, but let's, let me just use this as an example of what I mean. Let's say that I'm unsure because each one of, okay, each one of these, so like, this is a cable that's just a simple four over four. I think it's a four over four cable, but that occurs every 10 rows. This eyelet pattern right here is every four rows. And that's just a, you know, like a yarn over slip, slip, knit, yarn over slip, slip, knit. And then on row three, it would be knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over. Okay. So I can read my knitting and know that, but here, no, wait, I, it's mirrored backwards. So I'm struggling to show you. Okay. Here, right here. This is a 16 row repeat of this lace pattern and I'm gonna have to investigate what's what. So what I mean by tinking back to determine that would be, like I would look at it and I would, I would put in my needle and I would go, okay, I'm taking out a knit two together and I'd write that down. I'm taking out a yarn over and I would write down yo. I'm taking out a knit two together and I would write that down. And then I would go look at the chart or written instruction to <laughs> Lindsay's face. <laughs> and That's I would go- like torture. No, I, no, it's a way of figuring out where you were. Oh, I, certainly it's a way. He's like, rip. <laughs> He's like, no, screw that. <laughs> it's certainly a, an option. <laughs> it's just <laughs> not an option I'm ever going to do. Well, don't ever, never say never. And it's a, not an option I'm going to do during this project. But you see what I'm saying about how you would go about that. Yeah. So I almost have the back finished. It's, it's pretty. So pretty. <clears throat> it is so pretty. So that's gonna live right here for a little while. But that but see, I would have to I'm not gonna frog that. I am gonna put in the oh, no. yeah. I'll put in the twelve hours at a time and I will try to finish that. However, there are some things I will probably I'm gonna have to decide what's in my top five. That's gonna be difficult because what I have to balance as Pearl together, what I have to balance with this is other projects that are in the pipeline for after this particular challenge that I have an actual calendar deadline for that you don't get to know about yet. <laughs> what counts and what doesn't count. Cause I was thinking today, I, I don't know that my car knitting should count. No. Because they're oh. just basic washcloths. Because that's an always going washcloth. Or one of my friends always has a sock going and it sits on her bedside table. Yeah, I always have this in my bag and it goes in the car. It's car knitting or it's the travel sock. Yes. Right. So does the travel sock count? If you no. If you'll that's notice. Like, then, that's where I invoke the hashtag boss knitter. Yeah. And and my, my car knitting is not going to count. Well, you get to decide what's in your five rotation. Yeah, exactly. You're the boss of your whips. <laughs> okay, then. If that's the way that you... Right. Agreed. I have a couple of, you know, like, if I'm... If I'm in the fall... Boss knitter a little bit of a new twist. Here's some other things that don't count in my world. <laughs> No, truthfully, here's here's one that doesn't count, and it's too big to show, but I have a socks yarn scrap blanket that's been oh, yeah. for years, because that's just like knit a square. It takes a half hour. Sometimes I work on it, sometimes I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm certainly not gonna frog the whole thing. But but it's not going your rotation, so you do some squares. Does it? Have you been putting off doing squares, like saving, oh, so-and-so gave me this yarn, or I got this little piece from the retreat, and so does it go in the rotation so you can do a couple squares? I would not spend 12 hours on it in the rotation, only because there's other projects that deserve- So you'd rather? 
well, they deserve the time more than that, like the sweater for my mother or a project that I have to do that I'm doing for our, an upcoming event for all of us, for the channel, or do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Well, and that's where part of the struggle has been. Like I've been working on the second Avenue forever and I maxed it out and I think I, I can do it with the time remaining. But in the beginning, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I can't get it done, what if I get so close? And I realize you're the boss, but, but for rule followers, like, um, I know, I know. I've thought of that too. Cause if you get 12 hours in and you only have like three rows left, what do you do? Well, you're going to finish it, obviously. You frog the other four projects. <laughs> yeah, so you can finish it because you're a rule follower. Yeah. No, you just spend 13 hours and get it done. But it's a 12-hour challenge. And what is the purpose of the Gideon Method? The purpose is knocking down your whips, whether it's 11 hours or 13 hours. Oh, see, now, now you're getting all dicey. Okay, it's so you not. want it to be 12 hours. 12 okay. straight cut. Like, I'm going to use a timer while I'm knitting. I've already thought about that. I've already tried to figure out how I'm going to do it because of the, you know, you talk about people that work. So today is day four. I have to knit today. I have not been able to knit for three days. So it might take me a while to knit for 12 hours. Right. So I was, do you do like a stopwatch? Is that what yeah. you're going to do? And then you can just stop it. And yep. it'll stop. Okay. Oh, you can pause it. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that. So how were you going to do it? I was just going to look at the clock and like make a little post-it note. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm thinking for the, for the people with little ones who might frequently get interrupted, it's really easy then to hit the, the pause. Pause. Oh, yeah. I don't no. know. Okay, yeah. look, okay. I'm going to yes. go start. Stop. Yep. But what if you? What if you forget to hit the stop? You got to remember. Yeah, I'll remember. I think I will remember the general vicinity of how much I had. And that way, because honestly, if anybody is like me, I rarely get to sit and net for long periods at a time. So I, I want to really know, you said you mathed it out. That's verbing a noun. But what I want, but I want to know, so you, what you did was you just kind of timed like how long it takes to do a row of your shawl? Yes, so I have, have you me timed it though. I think it well, it and so I don't No, I you have it. Pretty accurate. No, I haven't, but when I did it compared to how much I had, it was actually longer. Oh. So I don't know if I timed it on a knit row or a purl row. So I have it's 136 stitches. Right. And it takes me seven minutes. So you'd need to do a knit and a purl, and then then you'd have, you'd know how long it was for two rows, and you could average that. Because when I was starting the rugby stripes, I was trying to figure out how much I had left, honestly, to try to be able to be done for today. And yeah, if you quit knitting for three days, then that doesn't happen, but I am close. So um, yeah, just trying to figure it out. Wow. The blue oh. is so pretty. Yeah, and like, I can't, I can't math out this. I can't, I just can't, so. It's okay. Lindsay? Yes. We have each shown at least one whip. Let's, you need to share. Okay, do you want me to share one that's going to go in the rotation or one that doesn't count because I'm working on a sock, which I don't think counts? Okay, tell me why the sock doesn't count. Because it's car knitting. Oh, okay. Like, I'm not going to put, it's like Jill's washcloth. Like, I'm not going to put my sock like, I'm not, like, putting off finishing the sock. Okay. But I'm not going to put it in the rotation because I feel like it's not worth it. Well, it's not like the sock that I have been sitting on for two years. No. That I have been putting off. Not the no. same. Thing. It's just a sock. Okay. A vanilla sock. So, yeah. So, so show that. something that goes in your top five. Um, I get to see. Probably, okay. This goes in my top five. Mm -hmm. The brioche beanie. Yeah. It's, it's almost close. done. It's almost done. Yeah, it has like two more inches that he wants because he wants to be able to wear it like this. Okay. And have it slouch a little bit. Okay, yeah. So no, it for sure does not have 12 hours of knitting. But, but, so, no, that, but that's okay. It's okay. But I have to prioritize finishing it because it's going to be the weather where you don't need a hat anymore. 
<laughs> so that's one that I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish my fingerless mitts from the retreat. Fun. That I have not worked on at all since the retreat. Oh, okay, hold it up closer so people can see the pattern. Okay, that, for viewers, that is called Vivid Mitts. And the gal who's the designer, I can't pronounce her name, but I'll put the link down below. We'll put the and links to everything down below. I might frog it and restart it. Oh, why? Because there's a mistake. Like, way down here. And when we were at the retreat and I noticed it like four rows back, I was like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. But now it bothers you? Sometimes. Sometimes I don't notice it. So we'll see. <laughs> so here's the question then. So if you rip it back, oh, but if you're not ripping it all the way out, then it's still a whip and not a new project. Right. And I may just leave it because I'm probably not ever going to notice it when I'm wearing it. You'll notice. Because you already know it's there. You already know it's there. You're like, sometimes it bothers me, sometimes it doesn't. You already know it's there. Okay. Baby Harvest Cardigan. I'm going to finish that because all it has is sleeves. I was so hoping that was going to be in your rotation. Oh, oh my gosh. And Sleeve Island is not even a big deal on a baby sweater for Cloud. Right. Cloud. So cute. It so is. that, my Nora's Afghan will go in because I'm way behind on blocks. Well, let me talk about well, that. Behind. Well, let me talk about that really quick. That's one thing that in, so for my top five. Oh yeah, it wouldn't count for you. That's not going to be in my top five because we're doing one block a month. And so, right. I mean, that's a schedule, at least for the channel, that's a schedule. So that's not, I mean, each block is a fob unto itself right so it goes but see when i work on it when i put it in my top five this is block five okay so i kind of would like to get caught up well you could put block five in in your rotation and then no i'm gonna put nora's afghan in my rotation whole thing. okay yeah yeah gotcha okay. um and then cool oh, this yes my gosh, you're so far. Oh yeah, I've worked on it a lot this week. Oh my gosh, you are so far on it. Hold oh, Jenna, I found my needles. Yay! You gotta tell viewers what that pattern is. It's a baby thing. Hold on. It is called Hayfield Pinafore. Show the picture on the front. Oh, so not the dungarees. And you're using what's the yarn that you picked? Um, baby blossom DK. And I don't know the color because I lost the band. Well, but you, yeah, it's so cute. Yeah. It really is. <sighs> okay, so that's in your rotation. I feel like that you don't have twelve hours left on that. Probably. No, but that's okay. But that's the point is to just get them knocked out. That's great. Here's what I'm gonna frog. <gasps> You're gonna frog your three color cashmere? Yeah, I don't like it. Okay. Val, uh, Val what, what, what don't you like about it? Um, I don't like the ribbing because it looks bad. And then I just don't like the rest of it. That's valid. Use the yarn for something that you love. I don't really like the yarn. Oh no. Okay, well, yeah. so then that's a situation where maybe you want to put that on the right. thread and Ravelry, get a few dollars for it and send it to a home where it's loved. Right. That would be a good video of how do you, are, are there, are there prep steps that you do to reuse yarn? Yep. And I'm going to be uploading a video for that purpose because of the frogging that's maybe going to happen. So I will frog something and then show you how I, I would go about re-skeining, steaming, re-skeining, and making it presentable, either for repurposing for myself or, you know, if I was gonna de-stash it, I would specifically say, I mean, full disclosure, you need to say, this yarn has been knitted before. Right. I frogged it, you know, right. But I will be showing how to go about that, yes. Because you that'll you be helpful. Yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily want to send somebody like all kinky, weird yarn. You know, you right. want to at least 
at least cake it, at least ball wind it. Right. Um, you know, and have it be nice. Yes. Yeah. Both, both for reshelving for yourself or for mailing to someone else. Yeah, for sure. I'll be doing a video on that. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> Yay. That'll be fun. That's Lindsay. That's awesome. I feel like you're going to be done with your frog it finish it you're gonna be done right away well you have things that won't take the well here's a sock that i was telling you about so i have one rose city roller yeah. and a ball of yarn <laughs> and no notes <laughs> oh. did you make nods i don't know <laughs> been a long time since i did this sock well you can count what your cast on was yeah, but what about the needle size? <laughs> oh. Well, you know what your gauge is. You can measure your gauge and then knit to that. <laughs> you can. You I might can. just have a sock. Oh, I'll put it with another random sock. Okay, so my mom, when the baby was born. Okay. Listen, when the baby was born, my mom came here, came over and was like doing a bunch of my laundry and stuff. And she was like, I don't understand why you have so many random unmatched socks in this box. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's because if I have like Under Armour socks and I bought them in a package and like they're all white and they have the little Under Armour logo and that is the only thing that's a color, I just put them together. like. If it's a white one with a blue and a white one with a red, I'm not going to wait until I find the other blue. I just match them. Well, where she really lost it <laughs> was I also put socks together that like are the same brand, but don't look alike at all. Okay. Whether it be because like the dryer ate a sock or the dog ate a sock. I lost a sock. So I'll just put it with a sock. <laughs> but you can't. I was with you until you started mixing store bought and hand knit. That is a word. Okay. Oh. Then I'll, it'll be fine. That's not okay. It's going to be okay. You'll have one happy foot and one not happy foot. How is that okay? Both of my feet will be happy. Because I have my favorite store-bought socks, and I already feel like I could wear one of those with this, and I'd be fine. So what about the temperature differential? There's not going to be one. Oh, like, one of my feet. So what I'm This isn't wool. This is, like, cotton. Like, it's not cotton. It's, the, it's not cotton, Jana. It's... <laughs> <laughs> your face. It's, but it's not wool. So it's not super warm. I've worn it. With another sock, and I was fine. <laughs> okay. There's no... It's be twitchy to consider that. Well, guess what? You don't have to do it. That's true, because I never would. <laughs> right, just like I never would tink back and write down what I did as I tinked. There you Put go. Put it with another sock. There you go. Or I'll just knit this and they won't be the same gauge and it'll be fine. But here's the thing they could be though, because you can lay down that sock that you have and figure oh, out. Oh, I certainly it. can, but I'll probably just knit it with whatever needles are handy. Okay. Well, I would say that's preferable to wearing one store bought and one hand knit. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, okay. So, oh, Jill's got things. Okay, what's well, that? It's going to go in my pile even though I don't that want it. This fabric. Okay, you got it. You got to sit, sit closer because now we can't hear you anymore. Okay. Here we go. Bitten clips. Oh. Oh. I don't oh. have to do it. Are you my not wearing them anymore? So, I have one pair of socks, which I loved so much. I loved it a lot. And since it was the first pair I knit, I, I did not know that I needed to knit denser. So it is, it's thin and it's getting ready to go in a spot. And I thought, oh, I'll just darn that one spot. Well, you know, then when I really look at it, the whole bottom is thin. There's a thin patch here and then there's a patch here. And 
Can I make a suggestion about that before you go ripping the whole thing? Can I make a suggestion about that? Uh huh. Okay. Likely the leg of the sock is just fine. Absolutely. Okay. Even the heel. So right about here and down is absolutely fine. Okay. So you knitted that sock cuff down, correct? Yes. So rip it back to the heel, pick up your stitches around the arch of the foot and yeah. re-knit the foot in that, a denser gauge with smaller needles. I just don't want to, but that's why it's- in the But you're the boss, but I'm just saying you could. And it will, no, I will, I will. And that's why it's in the bag. And that's why my feet have been cold this winter is because that's what I know I need to do. And I'm just not ready to do that yet but if i do it for 12 hours yeah look at that i mean that's like i know it's so sad i mean if you wouldn't have worn them every day no they would not have lasted very long that loose of a gauge wouldn't held that wouldn't hold up well yeah so well and so then so this is in my pile but then because of this then this will also be in my pile because it's my second pair of socks ever and it's the glacier yarn so i'm this far oh it's beautiful isn't it gorgeous yes it's and so so pretty but i knit it on the same oh. needle gauge as this so well, I guess I could just knit the leg in this and then everything else in the smaller one and do the same on the second sock and then I would have to rip totally out because my other thought was, well, I'm, I was just going to frog this and restart it. Which you could. Yeah. Either of which would work. I would just knit the rest of it on a smaller needle. And then do the second sock the same. Do, well, yeah. do the leg with the bigger needle and yeah. then everything else. But also I'm lazy. I'm so excited about it. I love how it swirls. It's so it's pretty. It's so pretty. Now, one thing you'll notice is when you go to a smaller needle, the swirl may or may not be exactly the same. The hmm. swirl may be different if you cast on at a different point in the color repeat of the yarn as well. Well, I was gonna really try hard to find that point so that I could have matching socks. Right, right. Too much work. Oh, man. That's Get funny. Ahead. That's funny. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about is how, how will we organize? So some people may not, you know, we talk about gathering up, prioritize your top five. I'm going to create a, a thread in the Ravelry group where people can show photos of their top five and we'll have a little accountability and, you know, talk about that. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have a, a separate project. This is probably obvious to most everybody, but I'll just say it anyway. I'm gonna have a separate project bag for each of my top five, and I'm gonna line them up on my desk. One, two, three, four, like that. And then take out that one, the others remain closed. And then I'll work on the one, and then I'll put it back in the bag, zoop, and then put it in the back of the line. And then the next one moves forward, like rotating your stock at the grocery store, right? How are you guys gonna do it? Are you just gonna have things march across your, your couch or what? No, I'm gonna set them on top of each other because it's supposed to go to the bottom of the pile. So mine will be stacked. Okay. Oh, I might do, yeah, you could, I could stack my project in a box, but I have a cat, he'll knock everything over. Yeah. I would box. stack, but now that you talked about laying them out, what I think I, I was, I was watching a video podcast and the gal in back of her had a um, board with the hooks oh. and then on each of her project bags she had loops. Oh! I like that. Yeah. And you could, or you could just use those stick them on hooks. Command hooks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those. Some people Come call on. them command hooks. Some people call them stick them on hooks. Okay. The one, here's, here's one I'm really debating about. This is a I really want to finish this, but I've, it's daunting. So I've talked about this one before. It's called the More Bark. More Bark. I knew it. I, knew I was going to guess. Did and you start I, it again? I restarted it after the cat mishap, but I've only had this much. It counts. But you, yeah, you can see the cables are starting in the middle. 
and I love it. I want to have this shawl on my person. I mean, I want to have it done. So um, it goes in. Mm -hmm. If my job is videoing and the channel, and that's my work, I have work knitting and I have my knitting. Right. So I, I have right. to, I have to do it like that. I'm going to have to figure that out where the 12 hours of my knitting is different than the knitting that I do for projects for the group. You see what I mean? Yes, that makes sense. And work knitting and my knitting. So yeah, I think the motor box, it's going to have to be in the top five because I miss it. I knew you were going to bring that one out. Okay. And this one has to go because it has to. What kind of yarn are you using for the motor bark? Oh, it's called MJ something. It's on my project page. I forget what it's called. Sorry about that. Uh, it, None of my projects are on my project page. I'll link it down below. Really? One of them is. My Nora's Afghan is. Almost oh. everything. My second avenue isn't, and I need to put that up, but the only reason it's not up is because I haven't stashed the yarn yet. So I need to stash, I need to write in all of the yarn. I don't think I stashed all my Nora's. I don't know. So the Nora's, that's not going to be in my rotation right. because that's a once a month thing. Although it might be in the rotation when that block comes up in the month. I don't know. Yeah. But that's work knitting. No, that's work knitting. I have to separate this in my mind. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, here's a big one though. You have to separate in your mind and also like physically. Yes. Here's a big one. This has been sitting for probably three years, maybe. Okay, this was a giant Afghan project that's going to be a king size thing. And it's different. Uh, some are rect it's different sizes of rectangles and it's an afghan where you knit these pieces oh my gosh okay so so this is one like these aren't blocked right okay right. here's the one that's in progress oh pretty okay um oh here's one this is like a border thing that goes down the side oh my gosh gosh <laughs> that goes down the side of the afghan right um so there's i don't know five or six of these oh here's another one here's a smaller one. Oh, that's pretty that's a lot i don't remember which way i don't remember which way okay you get the point i have a yeah. tub i have a tub with these this do you like it oh yeah this is you're going to knit on it and it's going to be awesome and yeah. I cannot wait to see what you get done. Yeah, this is brown sheet, bulky, lamb, I think it's lamb sprite bulky. I'll have to look. It's on my project page. I like that blue. It's such a pretty blue. And it will be a king size afghan. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's going to be fantastic. When and if I finish. <laughs> oh, I'm, finish. I'm probably at least... 30, I'm going to say I'm about 30% into it, at least. Okay, now I got to, yeah. Okay, you see yeah, the, the nice part about spending time on it is that it reignites your love of it. Oh. Or from the article, when you start knitting on it, you realize, hmm, I really don't love this. Right. Lamb spread super wash bulky, that's what it is. I like that color okay, a lot. Brand cheap, brand cheap company over in Mitchell. So, I mean, I have all the yarn. It was a significant quantity to purchase at the time. And it's not, it's not that I dislike it. It's that it's, it just got put to the side or whatever. It'll be so warm. But that's, yeah, but that's one of the things that needs to go on my top five. Sorry about my yawn just there. Okay. Oh, the biggest yawn of all time. Here's a, sock, here's a sock that is not travel knitting at all because it's chart it's complicated so that counts yes it counts as yeah it does and i have to decide if i have one of them done and i can't find it it's in the mess on my desk somewhere but here's the second one so it's oh wow oh that's pretty wow but you can see why that's not a travel sock right because it has the twisted traveling you know I can't make this go the right way. There we go. 
and it's com it's complicated. Yeah. So, yeah. So that needs to go in the rotation also because this is sock number two. <laughs> So I have to, you know, I have to finish, and it does have patterning down the foot as well. It's not just a plain. Oh, wow. wow. It has the cable, that traveling stuff down the foot. So that's got to go, that's got to go on the list. How many yeah. is that? I don't know. How many is that? So this sock, the sweater for my mother, the Mortarbark shawl, the big Afghan thing. That's four. <laughs> look how all of us are like that's, that's four right there um i'm so excited just to see the progress on everybody's stuff every project that you guys have picked i love i can't wait to see them so we need to decide how is this going to work so you do your 12 hours you have your stopwatch and i think what would be really neat to see people do and we could have Yes, here's the beginning of my 12 hours. Here's my after for my 12 hours. Oh, I love that. Just use Pick Stitch. What? Yes. Pick Stitch, the app where you can put side by side pictures. It's a free app. Oh, tell us about this. I'll put the link down below. I don't know about this. It's just an iPhone app or Android or whatever. And you can like put your pictures, you can put like as many pictures as you want together in like a little collage. Oh, okay. Do you have a I think that I had well, I think we should have that on a thread for before and afters like you know here's what it was in the my for before my first at the beginning of my 12 hour period yeah. see there's like all these different okay. yeah thank you and here's what it looks like after the 12 hours yeah and then if people have completed after the 12 hours like you have a couple of things Lindsay that yeah there you go awesome <gasps> So you have things, Lindsay, that would take probably not 12 hours to complete. So you could right. do that before and after and be like, yay, I finished. I mean, right. that's the whole point, right? Oh, that'll be fun. Oh, <laughs> you know, it would be hilarious. I hear some yawning. <laughs> You're a mom. It's okay to be tired. It's all right, really. Go ahead, Jill. What were you going to say? No, like, like before and then after, just this pile of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that'll happen. Can I guess one that you're going to rip out, Jill? Yes. Fading point. I, that's, so I don't, okay. The <laughs> cop out is for me not to put it in the rotation. Because um, you don't like it. What? Because you don't like it. I love, well, then, then my knitter friend finished hers and I love it. And I know why I fell in love with the first time. And in my head, you know, when you haven't touched something for a long time and you go back and you think, well, maybe it's not as bad as it was the first time. Maybe I'll like it the second time. Maybe I'll like the feel of the yarn. So I don't know that I'm going to frog that one yet. Tell you what I am gonna frog, and I do not feel bad about it. And, it is <laughs> and everybody loves it, but dude, that is just too hard for me. Oh, oh yeah. Frog it. If it's if it's not your jam, then it's there not. Is my brioche hat. I tell you what, I get around to the beginning and it is just a mess. I take those needles out right now. Let's watch. Do it. That's hard. Like, do it. Do it. Okay, so there needs to be some kind of an award for somebody that frogs something intense. Because this is only like how many inches of whatever. People are going to be frogging some pretty serious stuff. But it doesn't, it's not a comparison though. It's okay to get rid of it. It's okay. That was something that you tried it at the retreat. We all learned it. We tried it. It's not your jam. It's okay. Why is it so hard to frog, even when you like it? But it's liberating to let that go. Is it liberating? Show us. She's doing right now, it. Right now, it just feels like drop stitches. Do, do, do drop stitches give it low? Like, this does, doesn't that make everybody's, like, heart stop or something? No, it's exciting. No, I feel like, yay, because it's liberating. You're releasing that into the universe. It can become something else. This, this part is fun. I like the yarn. It's very soft. And now it can be something else. Yay! Frog pond. We need a song for the frog pond. We do. And this still counts. <laughs> oh, totally. 
Yay, good for you, Jill. Woo! There you go, that's one off your list. Now you get to add that back, and you get to put something else in your five rotation now. See, that's what I was afraid of, because eventually I'm gonna to get to the point where fading point has to go in there, and fading point has to go in there, because I have to make a decision on it, so. Yeah. Maybe it'll just go at the bottom. So I feel like we should talk about, and maybe we wanna write this up, I'll write up a post about this for the Ravelry group about what's the criteria that we use to make that decision. And obviously that's subjective and it's different for every person, but people might want some suggestions about that. So do you love, do you anticipate loving what the finished object looks like in your mind or on the picture of the pattern? And do you want to get there enough to put get in the colors that you're doing it in right and the feel of the yarn like i have to be okay with i mean it's a very tactile thing do you love the way the yarn feels do you want to spend like you said jill when you think about spending 12 hours on the fading point how do you feel about that what's your gut level response when we say that right now i am cautiously excited okay so here's here's a, another oh, thing. So here's a question. Go ahead. So if I get in, if I get in a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, and I get incredibly frustrated, I can't put it away and knit something else that I want because that's how I got myself in this position right. in the first place. Right. So then you really, it, you know, it really does force you to say, am I going to invest in this or do I need to let it go? <laughs> Right. There you go. It's not a frog song. Let it go. Oh God. Let it go. So here's what this I want. This is the Pearlcast, the musical edition. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I want to say about that. Uh, I remember this particular pattern. This, by the by the way, I didn't say this earlier. This pattern is called the Ornette Socks by Cookie A. And I want to. And what I want to say about this pattern is the first time I tried to knit this was horrible. I don't mean this particular pair. I've knitted this pattern before. This is the second or third time I've made this pattern. But the very first time I tried it was awful. I, I, I was confused by it. It was frustrating to me. I didn't, really, I didn't really know how to knit without a cable needle. It took forever. Um, I had very young children at the time, like toddlers. Um, well, I think they were like three and five. But it, the, I was at a point where I wasn't really able to sit down and focus on it and give it the time that it deserved. And so at that point I frogged it and I put it away. I put the yarn back or I did something else with it. I forget. I revisited that pattern. I don't know, probably a year later. And Val in our group remembers this because she made the same pattern and she and I talked about it on Ravelry. And I said at the time, when I came back to it and revisited it the second time, I said, I don't know why I thought this was so hard the first time. Because it clicked for me the second time I tried right. it. Right. And it, maybe it was just where I was at, where I was able to focus. The kids were a little older. I was able to spend more time with it. Maybe it was right. different yarn. I don't know. I came back to it and it just worked. It worked. And the second time I made this pair of socks, it was fantastic. It could be that way where you get into it a couple hours and you're like, I am, it's just a struggle. I don't want to spend this much time. So, okay. So then you decide maybe you frog it. You either use the yarn for something else or you put it in a Ziploc with that same pattern, seal it up, and then you come back to it later. But it's not a work in progress. You see what I mean? Oh, I see, I see what you're saying. I My head, when you were talking, I went, ooh, because then I just decide if I don't like it, I rip it out, I fix the yarn, I put it on our stash page. Yeah, and yeah. What did not work for me. My and you could do that. Really and maybe next time you come back to that pattern, maybe you decide later you want to knit that pattern with different yarn. And then it clicks for you. And that's, there's no harm in that. There's no shame in that. This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> yes. It's not supposed to be factory work that you hate for 12 hours. It's not supposed to be like that. So yeah. if you get into it a couple hours and you're like, I am not loving this and I cannot do this for another 10 hours of my knitting life, there you go. And it's okay. There's the answer. So I'm going to have to decide. 
I've already made one of these. I'm probably going to finish it, but I'm not loving it. You have to be okay with being the boss. And I know you're a rural, rural, I can't even say that. You are a rule follower, but you get to make the rule, right? Yes. So this is like a whole personal growth process here too, I'm sensing. for Because <laughs> I have to get under control. I have so many whips, it is stupid. And it's out of hand. So I think the whole point is that it's okay to let something go. It's okay to frog it and have a do-over and not feel bad about that. Because better that I should rip this out if I'm really not digging it and use the yarn for something that I would enjoy and make use of that and honor that possession that I have rather than letting it sit in a box like it has for the last two years. It's sad. I mean, that, that's no good. It weighs you down. And here's the needles I forgot I had that have been sitting here. I'm going to get new project bags. I'm going to find needles. Oh, that, that could be a thing too. Did anybody find any notions like that they forgot they had or they've been looking for or that one special row counter? Well, I found my missing needles. Earlier today, I couldn't find my, not just earlier today, like for the last like couple weeks, I haven't been able to find my interchangeable set, like my good one, and found it while I was looking for one of my whips. <laughs> and I've looked everywhere. <laughs> Except there. Except for there. <laughs> so... Gather up your project bags or boxes or Ziplocs or however it is you want to arrange. And then we'll have a, it, well, we're not casting on, are we? We'll have a gathering thread, a, a start. I don't know, we'll call it something. So if people have suggestions about categories, that would be a lot of fun, like the before and Oldest. after. What's that, Lindsay? Oldest whip. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have categories and potential prizes for things that we come up with. Like Lindsay just said, what is the oldest whip you have discovered? What is that whip? Like, it's supposed to be a hat or it's supposed to be a sweater and nobody could guess it based on what it looks like, which is why you may end up frogging it. Yeah. yeah. Or you don't even know what it was. I'm so excited. Because oh, God, then you're going to be happy because you're either going to finish it or you're gonna frog it. And you're cleaning up. It. Yeah, you're cleaning up. Yeah, my desk is a nightmare. It'll be nice to have things. Yeah. Surf, so I can see a surface. <laughs> Choose. Choose your word. Choose. Yeah. yeah. Choose. So, how, how would you make that decision? Like, that's what we were talking about is making that decision is gonna be different for each person, whether you're going to carry on with this or whether you're gonna let it go. Or you're going to decide to put it in a bag, frog it, put it in a bag with the pattern, set it aside, and come back to that later. But it's not a work in progress. It's yarn that's designated for something you haven't started yet. Yes. Right. But maybe the yarn wants to be something else. I have something that wants to be something else. Tell me. So I have, I ran out of project bags. It's called Iceberg Tonal. It's so pretty. And she wanted me to make a hat out of it. Um, and it's so tiny. It's way, way, way too tiny. And the yarn is just too skinny for it, but it's beautiful yarn. So right. I, think, I think it'll be DK weight socks for her. She's going to be so excited. She's been begging for socks and, and, but I didn't want to make her socks because her feet are still growing, but I could, I could invest in DK socks. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. She'll be so excited. And then when she grows out of them, you can mail them to Lindsay. <laughs> Hand me down. So there you go. You could just frog that and you've already know, you already know you need to frog that. Yep. And I already know what it's going to be when it grows up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should hurry on and hurry up and cast it on so it can go in your pile. You know, I really thought about that actually <laughs> before it started. What, so, I, what did yeah. I want to cast on? Oh, because I, I wanted to, and I can't remember, it wasn't a sweater. It was something else. I'm like, oh, if I hurry up and cast it on, it will count. But 
defeat the purpose. So we're going to run the, well, no. But then they wouldn't defeat the purpose. Yeah, if you really want to do it, put it in the rotation. Oh, uh, I want to get, I want to get rid of this. I want to do the stuff that I have. Okay, so do you have five things? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm surprised. I remember we were so monogamous. Too. Yeah, I, for somebody that thought she was a monogamous knitter, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I just did the thing, which was seven, and my car knitting, which doesn't count. So a year ago, you were monogamous a year ago. Eight. Oh my gosh, I am such a little yarn freak. <laughs> oh my. Oh, that's fantastic. I can't wait to see everybody's stuff. I know. So let's talk, we were talking about categories. So like something that you aren't sure what it was or what the purpose was. Something you can't, maybe you're not sure where you were. Like you, you'll have to do some detective work to figure out where you were in the pattern. <laughs> Oldest whip, like Lindsay said. I think there has to be something for most yards frogged because <laughs> that brioche beanie, which I didn't like the brioche, still brought me so much um, angst. Yeah. Man. Okay, but there's a difference between, that's righteous ripping. Yeah. Yeah. So most yards frogged. I mean, we don't want people to just rip out stuff just for the sake of ripping stuff. No. But, but no. But if it's liberating, that's what you truly need to do to purge yourself of that albatross, then yeah, do that for sure. And then you open up all the possibilities of having lots of yardage to make something new, right? Yes, what's old is new again. So when we're talking about categories, these will, are these gonna be like, these are potential like prize categories. What we're doing for the knit, for the knit along or the frog it finish it challenge is we're soliciting if you know of somebody in your local yarn shop or you're an indie dyer or you make stitch markers or you have little notions and you want like an etsy store or whatever and you want to promote that shoot me an email or a ravelry message and let me know if you want to contribute a prize for one of these categories and we will be um, running this challenge from February 15th until probably the end of March, probably about six weeks. You think that's reasonable? You can get a lot done in six weeks of Gideon method rotation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Gideon. And you can keep going. Well, sure. You can keep going. You can keep using the method. This is just, yeah, this is just our challenge. So. That's fun to do with friends. All right. So I think that probably wraps up this episode of the Pearl Cast. Gather up your whips. Show us pictures. We're going to host this over in the Ravelry group because it's easier to thread things and it's sticky note things up at the top. That's not to say you can't post in the Facebook group if that's your preference and get support and encouragement there as well. But the prize categories and the stuff will be over there primarily. So join us over there. And we'll start on February 15th. Fantastic. Bye. Bye. Bye.